behalf of the Law Enforcement Memorial Committee, I'd like to welcome you to this annual service. Special welcome to all the affected families that are here, our guests. Will the honor guard please post the colors? Please stand. Mark time, porch, detail, hold, brief in. Please remain standing for the invocation. Could we please bow our heads? Blessed God, in Jesus' name, we come before you for this day, thanking you and praising you for the opportunity to remember those that have fallen, Lord. Father, we have many people here, many agencies, family members, friends, Lord. We just ask that you bless those that grieve and those that remember finally. Father, we just ask you to let their hearts be strong, and we just ask that their agencies continue on with the tenacity according to your word in Romans 13th chapter. Father, we just ask that you continue to heal them and bring forth many, many blessings, Lord. And those that support them, Lord, we ask that your blessings be upon those families. And Lord, those that support law enforcement, Lord, you said you would touch them and bless them as we do your bidding. We thank you for it, and we thank you, Father, because you loved us first. In Jesus' name, amen.
stand together side by side and say Again, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the committee. It is indeed my privilege to introduce our first presenter, Governor of the State of Kansas, Governor Laura Kelly. First, I want to just welcome all of you to the 37th Annual Kansas Law Enforcement Memorial. I am truly honored uh, to be part of today's ceremony. I have witnessed this particular ceremony many times in the 14 years that I served in the state senate, but this is the first time that I stand here as your governor. Uh, some of you may know that I'm the daughter of a career military officer. Uh, I'm going to go a little off script now because I want all the children here uh, who have lost a parent uh, or an aunt or an uncle, to know that I lost my father uh, when I was 14. I know how hard this is. Uh, but trust that your parent, your aunt, or your uncle is looking down on you and will be with you, uh, if not here in real life, uh, looking down from above uh, and thinking about you and caring about you all through your lives. My parents, my dad, taught me the importance of public service and the profound impact service women and men have on our lives. Um, what you may not know is that in addition to being the daughter of a career military officer, I'm also the granddaughter and grandniece of a number of New York City police officers. I have a deep appreciation for those who put their lives on the lines to protect others. Your dedication to protecting our state and ensuring our communities are safe is commendable. So on behalf of the state of Kansas, I offer my condolences to the family members of the five law enforcement officers being recognized here today. Your loved ones made the ultimate sacrifice while carrying out their duties, and today we mourn with you. As part of today's recognition, I've ordered the flags to be flown at half-staffed and signed an official proclamation that lists their names and declares today as Kansas Law Enforcement Memorial Day. We do this to show our appreciation for the courageous work being performed by law enforcement officers across the state and to recognize the sacrifices they make. Three of the officers being honored today lost their lives in 2018. Deputy Sheriff Teresa Sue King of the Wyandotte County Sheriff's Office Deputy Sheriff Patrick Thomas Rohr of the Wyandotte County Sheriff's Office. Deputy Sheriff Robert Kenneth Kunsi III of the Cedric County Sheriff's Office. My thoughts are with their families as we honor their service and their lives. I also want to applaud the work 
of the Memorial Advisory Committee in recognizing two other officers who laid down their lives to protect others and who were previously overlooked for this recognition. Under Sheriff George Bernal in 1920 and City Marshal Frank Harrington in 1885. I'm sorry this honor was so long in coming for them, and thus their families could not be comforted by knowing that they would not be forgotten. I thank all of you for being here to honor the profound sacrifices of these officers today, and I extend my sincere appreciation to all Kansas law enforcement officers and their families. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce the Chief Law Enforcement Officer for the State of Kansas, Attorney General Derek Smith. To the family and friends of the fallen, good afternoon and welcome to this 37th annual ceremony. Today, for what is perhaps the first time, the names of fallen law enforcement officers from each of the three centuries spanned by Kansas history are added to our memorial. Our emotions are most raw for those servants killed this past year in the line of duty, deputies King and Roar, Wyandotte County and Deputy Kunze of Sedgwick County. But only the passage of time separates them and their sacrifice from the line of duty deaths of Jefferson County under Sheriff Bernau in 1920 and Jewel City Marshal Harrington in 1885. There is a kinship of the Kansas law enforcement community that spans jurisdictions and geography personal backgrounds and history, urban and rural, and all lines of service in law enforcement. And today we are reminded how that kinship also is timeless. It spans the ages as well. Since ancient times, those who have stood between the sheep and the wolves have earned the respect and gratitude of their communities. In our times, for those who don the badge and do the same, it is still so. Kansans are deeply grateful for the dedicated and professional service of law enforcement officers every minute, of every hour, of every day. And that is because in the times of greatest need, it is the law enforcement officer whom our citizens call upon. When there is violence or unrest, suspicion or emergency, danger or desperation, the call goes forth to those who have chosen public service through the carrying of the badge. That was true long ago for Marshal Harrington, killed in the 19th century while pursuing a horse thief, and for under Sheriff Bernau, who died in the 20th century while trying to secure a mentally ill individual. And it remained true this past year for Deputy Kunze, killed roadside while engaging a suspect, and for Deputies Rohr and King, killed while transporting a prisoner. To the family and friends of each of these officers, we are so sorry for your loss, and we hope you find some comfort in knowing that whether or not each of us knew these officers personally, all in the law enforcement community loved them because by their service we knew them. The names of these five officers now join those of their colleagues to continue their service in perpetuity by reminding Kansans who passed the memorial what it means to be a law enforcement officer. The memorial is appropriately placed on the grounds of this State House to remind not only visitors, but also all who serve here, of what is required to keep our state and its citizens safe and secure and civilized. Because the enactment of laws means little without the real world dedication of those who enforce the laws and make the words on the page real and alive for Kansas citizens. That is the work, first and foremost, of law enforcement officers. The memorial and this annual gathering remind us that often that work is dangerous and sometimes it is deadly. 
There are now 286 names of Kansas officers killed in the line of duty etched in the granite on the memorial. We added five this year, and but for the grace of God, there could have been more. Since last we gathered here for this ceremony, two deputies were shot and wounded in Jewell County, an officer in Russell County, and just this past week, the sheriff and undersheriff in Rice County, and they are not alone. Others have been injured some seriously in the line of duty throughout our state and throughout this past year. Nationwide, 163 officers died in the line of duty last year. So far this year, 35. And not all wounds incurred by law enforcement officers are to the body. The pressures and demands of the job are tremendous. The constant exposure to the worst of human nature, to disrespect and sometimes to evil itself, tends to accumulate and take a toll. The constant knowledge, even when unspoken, that a mother or father or spouse or child or loved one who serves as a law enforcement officer each day risks leaving for work and not returning also strains law enforcement families. For our state of nearly 3 million people spread over 82,000 square miles, only 8,532 people currently bear the title and carry the load as law enforcement officers. It is truly the thin blue line that has answered this call of duty. So this year, as every year at this time, we pause in this annual ceremony to recognize those who have fallen in the line of duty and their families and their friends and fellow officers. We pause to express our appreciation to all who serve and who have served and to their families who also bear the burden of law enforcement service. We do this at this State House to remind all of us and all who serve here of the inherent connection between free self-government and those who enforce the rule of law. We gather here in years when God smiles and the sun shines bright to remind us of the goodness of public service. And we gather in years, perhaps like today, when God weeps with us for the loss. What was true 2,000 years ago is still true today at this annual ceremony and each day of the year for the women and men serving in law enforcement. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. So on behalf of Kansans everywhere, it is my honor to say to each and every officer, living or dead, gathered here or elsewhere today, and to every law enforcement family, thank you. We are grateful for your service. And for the family and friends of the fallen, rest assured in the truth of these words that are given emphasis today by the recognition of Marshall Harrington, whose end of watch was more than 134 years ago. We will never forget. Today we formally add five names of individuals who made the ultimate sacrifice in the state of Kansas. Teresa Sue King and Patrick Thomas Rohrer. On June 15, 2018, Wyandotte County Deputies King and Rohrer were in the process of transporting a prisoner when that prisoner was able to obtain a handgun and fatally shot both deputies. Deputy Rohrer was 35 years of age and passed away June 15, 2018. Deputy King was 44 years of age and passed away June 16, 2018. Robert Kenneth Kunze III. On September 16, 2018, Sedgwick County Deputy Kunze was investigating a report of a suspicious person. Deputy Kunze located the suspect and in an exchange of gunfire was fatally wounded. He was 41 years of age. George Bernal. 
On April 29th, 1920, Jefferson County Under Sheriff Bernal was assisting in the search for an individual suffering from mental illness. A foot chase ensued, and during the pursuit, Deputy Bernal suffered an apparent fatal heart attack. Frank Harrington. On March 14, 1885, Jewel City Marshal Harrington was assisting in the capture of a suspected horse thief. The suspect was located and began firing at officers fatally wounding Marshal Harrington. Frank Harrington was 38 years old at the time of his death. On a more positive note, I was informed this morning that the Rice County deputy that was wounded is being released from the hospital today and at his request is being transported in a patrol car and escorted home by other deputies. We remember them today. Ah, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
We'll now begin the outdoor ceremony. If you would make your way down to the downstairs, those of you at the family and whatever, we will follow the honor guard out this door. If you need time to get on elevators and go down, those of you that may need it, there are elevators on either side here, and uh, we'll give you plenty of time to get there.
right, keys. Port, pause. Ready, aim, fire. Thank you.